Hello guys, welcome to another video. It's awesome how we can create applications in SwiftUI. However, what will happen with all our legacy code written in UIKit? Should we start over re-implementing all those things in UIKit? Hmm, it doesn't look like a good idea, right? Also, what will happen if there's no equivalent component from UIKit, for example, like UI text view in SwiftUI? What will happen? Should we wait until Apple incorporate that in the framework? Well, not exactly. Apple talked about that and SwiftUI comes with a great tool to interact and transform our UI views into SwiftUI views. Today, we will explore UI view representable. My name is Pete and this, this is Swift and Tips. Okay, let's start with our first demo. In this case, we want to display an activity indicator in the screen. However, we cannot use directly UI activity indicator view in SwiftUI because SwiftUI don't understand UI views. So what can we do? It's time to see the power of UI view representable. So for that, let's add a new file and call it activity indicator. Then add a stroke with that name and import UIKit and SwiftUI. And finally, let's confirm to UI view representable. Okay, you might start seeing compiler issues. Let's use Xcode to see what's going on. Click here and you will see that we are not confirming to protocol UIB representable. So let's apply the fix changes here. Okay, we got this type alias with UIB type. What's that? Normal type alias is used to rename types to get a better description about our problem. However, here is just more than that. So let's explore with command click UIB representable. Okay, so what do we have here? First of all, UI view representable is a protocol, as we mentioned earlier, but also this protocol is conforming our protocol, which in this case is view. And if you remember, view is also required a body type. However, in this particular case, what this word close is telling us is that we don't require body. Yeah, it's still a view, but in this case, we don't care about body because we want to use UI kit internally. But this view protocol makes us the compatibility between UI kit and SwiftUI, which is great. Also, the type alias showed before is required because this is a generic protocol with an associated type. We will talk soon about generics in Swift, but for now, what you need to know is here, this is another requirement that makes a restriction for what type this UI view type is required for this protocol. In this case, it's mandatory to use a UI view, whatever thing inherit from UI view it's valid for this type. So for our case UI activity indicator view is inherited from UI view so we are good to go. Additionally we have other methods that we need to conform in order to use UI view representable. First we have make UI view to start creating our view. This is just like a initializer for our view. Next we have update UI view. This method will be called Every time the Swift UI requires to render our view again, you can do any kind of activity here to, you know, change your view internally with UI kit. Also, we have dismantle UI view, which is kind of a de init or the structure to clean up our view in case we need it. Remember, UI views are reference types, so if we need to do any specific uh, cleanup, this is a good to go. Also, if we add a, any kind of target action or notification, for example, this is also useful. Finally, there are other two elements, coordinators, make coordinator and context. But we want to talk about that in a moment. OK, let's go back to our activity indicator view. OK, it's time to fix our type alias. So let's explicitly say that we want to use a UI activity indicator view. Okay, more issues appear, so let's fix it with this button. Cool, but this time it's auto-completed the methods 
missing in the protocol description. So in this case, we, we have make UI view and update UI view. Also, since that we specify what is the UI type, the compiler auto completes also that type. If we go back to UI view representable just for a moment again, we can see that this is conforming this generic value here. So yeah, we're good to go. We have the right type explicitly set here. Okay, to create our view, we will use make UI view. Like I mentioned before, here is the entry point to actually initialize your view and create it. Just keep one thing in mind. This method is executed only one time, which means that all your UI views will be reused over and over, no matter what happened. Okay. So if you, I will take care of that, but keep in mind that is the opposite with UI update UI view, because here you will be calling this method every time the Swift UI framework rendered your view again, just a big difference here. So for our case, it's very simple. Just, we want to return an UI activity in the carrier view. So let's do it. Okay, this particular initializer is requiring us a style parameter, but I think it would be better if we can provide that outside of the context of this view. So let's create a property here. And we just need to autocomplete this. There you go. Okay, now what about update our view? We need here to clarify when, what will happen when we update our view, okay? Normally, the use case here is that if we are loading something, we want to display this activity indicator, otherwise we want to hide it, okay? Then we require something from outside to telling us, okay, we are loading data or not. I think it's good also add a new property here reflecting that. Let's use a Boolean. Okay, now that we have our boolean, the only thing we need to do is an if else. Okay, for the case that we are loading data, we want to show the activity indicator. So how we do that? If you can see here, we have the UI activity indicator reference, so we can use it. And actually, all the properties related to UI activity indicator view are here, so it's cool. Let's actually call star animating and do the opposite when we are not loading. So let's stop the animating. Okay, pretty nice. However, actually we are using five lines of code. So let's reduce this in just one simple line. Instead of doing that, let's use our ternary operator in Swift. There you go. Actually, that's it for this uh, requirement. And a fun fact is that we don't need actually to explicitly saying the UI view type. So if we remove this, it's still compiling. This is happening because Swift is inferring since we are using UI activity indicator here and here. Okay, the type alias should be UI activity indicator view. So yeah, this is cool. And yes, it's just a fun fact. Okay, now it's time to create this in a Swift UI environment. So let's create a Swift UI view. Okay, let's use our activity indicator. And you can see the two parameters we set previously. We will use a style. In this case, we want a large style and we set to true. Okay. Let's see what happened. There you go. It's working. However, we need a way to change this value because we want to see something in action. So for that, let's create a state property. And let's add a button just to toggle the change of this boolean. Oh yeah, let's put this in a B stack. There you go. Let's try again. There you go. Yeah. 
What we are doing here is just changing our state and since this is reinvoking a new view again, activity indicator is invoked again. So let's uh, call in this U update UI view. So let's actually put some breakpoints here and run the simulator. Yes, as you can see here, we are creating our UI view by this method. So let's keep running. And our first time we are updating our view because, well, it's, it's called by SwiftUI. Let's see what is the value. It's false. So we will execute the stop animating this point. So we'll do nothing. But if we press change value, there you go. Now update UI view is called. So now our value is true. Cool. Now, if we do it one more time, our value is false. Pretty nice. As you can see, creating some kind of simple views here is awesome. But what do you think if we see a more complete example in the next video? I took some time today to explain the theory with make and update methods. And in the next one, we'll cover more about coordinators and contact objects. That is for now. Don't forget to like and subscribe if this content was useful for you and follow me on Twitter to know when I will upload the next one. Thank you so much and have a great day.